Okay, so welcome to this third video on oocyte activation and the role of calcium waves in oocyte activation. So, okay, so far what we've discussed is that when the sperm makes contact with the oocyte, what happens is that the sperm is believed to transfer some phospholipase C of the zeta type into the membrane of the oocyte. Now, phospholipase C of the zeta type is going to convert PIP2 into IP3 uh, and diacylglyceride. IP3, or inositol 1,4,5-trisphosphate, uh, is then going to go and bind to the IP3 binding sites on uh, the IP3 receptors. And what that does is it makes unavailable an inhibitory calcium binding site and makes available a stimulatory calcium binding site. Now, I want to stress a point that I didn't really stress in the previous video enough. Phospholipase C, when the sperm gives the puts the phospholipase C into the membrane of the oocyte, this phospholipase C is free to diffuse in the membrane, basically, and it can go off, and you'll get phospholipase C, basically, going up all over the place in the oocyte membrane. Therefore, you get a whole cytoplasmic increase in IP3 in the oocyte, which is why it's not the case that just the IP3 receptors nearby uh, where the sperm uh, first touched uh, the oocyte have IP3 bound to them, basically. All the IP3 receptors are going to have um, IP3 bound to them because IP3 goes up in the entire cytoplasm of the cell. Now, what also happens is that the sperm's contact causes an initial influx of calcium nearby where the sperm touches. So the sperm touches here, and that will cause a tiny little bit of calcium to come into the cell from the extracellular fluid at that pole of the oocyte. Okay, so you get some calcium here, and what that calcium will do is it will bind to the stimulatory calcium binding sites that have been exposed on our IP3 receptor, and that will cause this IP3 receptor to adopt the open conformation. Now, what will happen is that calcium will come out of this IP3 receptor, and at the moment, all that's happening is the IP3 receptors nearby where the sperm touched, i.e. nearby where the initial influx of calcium came from the extracellular fluid, they are going to be activated, but these ones over here aren't. Now, the way the wave propagates is that when these IP3 receptors over here, nearby where the sperm first touched open, they're going to release calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum. This calcium is then able to spill over, and it can now activate these primed IP3 receptors in the neighbouring portions of the cell. Um, so these IP3 receptors have got IP3 bound to their IP3 binding site. That means that the receptor is primed, it has stimulatory calcium binding sites exposed, so that when the calcium spills over from these other IP3 receptors, then the calcium is going to cause them to open. So they will adopt the open conformation, and they will allow calcium to go up. And the signal will continue to propagate along the endoplasmic reticulum. And this is basically how you get this calcium wave. You start off with calcium going up nearby where the sperm touched. And that's because um, the uh, calcium in that from the IP3 receptors in the portion of the endoplasmic reticulum closest to that uh, pole of the oocyte have opened and released calcium. I want to stress that this calcium coming in from the extracellular space, that is a tiny, tiny amount of calcium. It just triggers the whole thing off. The rise in calcium concentration that you observe in the cytoplasm is due to the release of intracellular stores. So you get release of intracellular stores here. That spills over into the neighbouring portions of endoplasmic reticulum them. Their IP3 receptors then open. You get release of calcium intracellular stores here, and it continues propagating along the oocyte away from where the um, sperm initially made contact with the oocyte. Right. Now, another thing that I need to tell you about is that um, basically it, you don't just keep these IP3 receptors open now. It's a calcium wave in that once, uh, what needs to happen is not only does it need to propagate forward, but the ones behind need to close, basically. So what needs to happen is if we plot 
calcium concentration. I think that's the best way to uh, illustrate this. If we plot calcium concentration against time, so let's say this is time, and this is on this y-axis, we're going to plot calcium concentration. Okay, and let's do it for loads of different points. So let's start off with point 0.1 in the cell. So this is point 0.1 in the oocyte. Uh, so if we plot calcium concentration of versus time for point 0.1, what's going to happen is you're going to get a very rapid calcium rise when the endoplasmic reticulum stores are being emptied. Well, not emptied, but released. And then what happens is it drops back down again. Okay, so that's what's happening at point one. Now if we look at another point, let's look at point two over here. What's going to happen is that that one's uh, rise in calcium is going to be a bit more delayed of the rise in calcium from point one. So point one is going to go through its rise in calcium before point two. Now that makes sense because the wave of calcium is propagating in this direction. So let's do point three now over here. If we do point three, it'll be it'll have its calcium spike basically even further along, so maybe something like that. So the point that I'm trying to get, uh, get across with this graph is that the calcium does not go up and stay up. It's not, it's not this. It's not in the one in the blue. It's not, and then it stays high at point one. It goes down again. You have this oscillation, well, this rise and then fall, basically. And what's propagating forward is the spike, basically. So, what is happening there? Well, basically, something happens with the IP3 receptors that causes them to close. So, the IP3 receptors basically close after a certain amount of time. We do not know what causes this. Um, we do not understand this, but the IP3 receptors close. That means that the release of calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum stops in this portion of the cytoplasm. And what will happen then is you will have the circa pump, uh, which is uh, pumping two calcium ions into the cytoplasm. Uh, sorry, into the lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum in exchange for free protons going out and also the hydrolysis of ATP. So you hydrolyze ATP to ADP and inorganic phosphate in this process. Okay, so um, basically the important thing to understand is that it's not a rise and then a continual rise. It is a wave that is spreading across the cytoplasm, a wave of opening and then closing the IP3 receptors. So initially what happens is at the, at the portion of the cell closest to where the sperm touches, the IP3 receptors there open for a while, then they close. And their release of calcium then causes the IP3 receptors a little bit further down to then open and then close. And the release of calcium from them then causes the IP3 receptors further down still to open and close. So this wave of activity in the IP3 receptors propagates along, and that causes a wave of calcium, basically, also to propagate, i.e. where the IP3 receptors are transiently open, you'll get a transient increase in calcium, and then it'll go back down as the um, circa pump then returns it back into uh, the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, now the other important thing to say is that it's not just a single wave of calcium you get. You get a wave, and then you get another wave, and another wave, and another wave. So the process continues to happen, basically. Uh, so the IP3 receptors inactivate for some reason. They stop conducting after they've had a large conductance, and we do not understand why that is. But then something changes, and they reactivate again, basically. And then they allow calcium to move out of them again, and they set off the entire process all over again, basically. And we do not understand the mechanics of how the IP3 receptors go into this closed fate, uh, even though they've still got IP3 bound to them, basically basically, and also the calcium concentration is high, so it doesn't make sense, our model doesn't yet make sense, because these IP3 receptors continue to have the IP3 bound to them, and the calcium's high, so it should be activating them, but for some reason they shut, um, and then uh, the IP3 remains bound to them, and then after a certain amount of time, they seem to open again, and then the whole process happens again, basically. You conduct another calcium wave across the, um, across the cytoplasm of the oocyte. 
And uh, what or another important property of these uh, uh, these calcium waves is that the um, frequency of the wave, basically, how much, how many waves you conduct in a, you know, you, that pass across the cell in a certain amount of time, seems to be proportional to the IP free concentration in the cytoplasm. So there's another um, matter that we do not understand, but that's what we know. We know that these waves continue to propagate through um, through the cytoplasm and somehow the concentration of IP3 in the cytoplasm determines how frequently you um, set off new waves. Okay, right. Uh, so we'll call it there for this video and continue our discussion in the next video.